Are the terms cracker, white trash, and redneck racist? Hmm, I wonder who came up with these phrases. Often when we talk about white privilege, a common rebuttal is, I can't be privileged, I grew up poor, or tell that to a homeless person. But being disadvantaged in one area doesn't negate privilege in others. White privilege doesn't erase the existence of poor white people or the challenges they face due to their class, nor do discussions of white privilege erase the harmful stereotypes about being poor and white. Take, for example, the terms cracker, white trash, or redneck. All of these terms have been aggressively used by a white upper class to insult a white underclass. While these terms have become racialized over time, they have a classist origin that goes way back. Let's start with cracker. While linguistic history is always murky, recent research has shown that in the 16 and 1700s, British aristocrats used cracker as a shortened version of cracked brains, or idle-headed, to disparage lower-class people as dumb and lazy. It was then imported to colonial America and used by wealthy elites to disparage poor whites. A letter to the Earl of Dartmouth said, I should explain to your lordship what is meant by crackers. They are a lawless set of rascals on the frontiers of Virginia, Maryland, the Carolinas, and Georgia, who often change their places of abode. Basically, it was a way to disparage people as lazy, lawless, and most importantly, landless, which is a hoity-toity way of saying poor. So this term was started by rich white people to disparage poor white people. It was all about them being poor, not about them being white. Hashtag historical context matters. The term was later used by African-American slaves and Northern sympathizers as a shortened version of whip cracker in reference to the whip-wielding plantation workers. So yes, the word cracker was racialized, but the slaves weren't oppressing poor white people by using the term because they were still slaves. Hashtag historical context still matters. White trash shows up next. It's believed to have originated in Baltimore in the 1820s as a way for Southern house slaves to disparage poor whites, but it gained popularity in the 1850s as a catch-all phrase that replaced other weird old-timey insults for poor whites, such as sand hillers and clay eaters. White trash was stigmatizing and meant to draw a line between real white people who owned the best land and people and the riffraff who lived on wastelands. Redneck fits in with these terms too. Appearing in the late 1800s, it was used to insult farmers in the South who usually had sunburned necks from being outside all day and, you know, having to work. You worker, why don't you go work some more? All of these terms are rooted in classism. And since classism and racism often go hand in hand, you might be wondering why didn't this oppressed underclass of poor white people join forces with the oppressed black people? Well, at one time they actually did. And the white elites were terrified that these groups would eventually overthrow the existing power structure because that almost happened. During Bacon's rebellion, white property owner Nathaniel Bacon united slaves, indentured servants, and poor whites in an uprising against the upper class. Together, they burned down the Virginia capital. Ah, oh, bacon, bringing people together since the beginning of time. They eventually lost, but instead of realizing that oppressing people was horrible and that everyone deserved to be treated like a human being, the upper class instead stopped having white servants altogether and only relied on slaves. To make matters worse, they literally invented militia jobs for poor white people to police slaves. As Michelle Alexander points out in her book, The New Jim Crow, this not only eliminated the risk of an alliance between black slaves and poor whites, but it also meant poor whites suddenly had a direct stake in the race-based system of slavery. Poor whites weren't any better off, but hey, at least they weren't black. And unfortunately, this strategy has worked for most of American history. Yep. So are terms like cracker, white trash, and redneck racist? Well, no, they've been racialized, but they're not racist. They were created and used by rich white people to disparage poor white people, not because they were white, but because they were poor. And while racism and classism often overlap, racial prejudice frequently exists outside of class. Remember, you can change your class, but you can't change your race. Wealthy and accomplished people of color still encounter racism. Just a few years ago, multi-billionaire Oprah Winfrey was in an upscale shop in Switzerland and was told she probably couldn't afford one of the pricey handbags she was looking at. That's because the shop attendant just saw a black woman in the store and not mother Oprah. But look, I'm not giving anyone a pass on name calling. Even though these insults aren't racist, it doesn't mean they aren't hurtful. And that's because they promote a long history of class-based bias. Classism of any kind is divisive and takes attention away from the real problem, that people are still struggling all over while the rich get richer. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Decoded.